Hey guys, so this is going to be a quick update um, of these copper crystals. Uh, if you haven't seen my original video for this, I will go ahead and put it in the description below. Uh, go and watch that first if you haven't seen this, as it teaches you how I made everything here. Um, this is the uh, little bit of crystals that I left on the cathode uh, to regrow. And as you can see, they're doing pretty good. Um, I would leave them in for longer to grow closer to that anode. However, I'm running into a problem, and I wanted to make a video of this because chances are you're gonna run into the same problem. Um, I was running at about five volts, and it was staying, I'd say, between 60 and 80 milliamps. And that I, I was growing it really slowly, and it went good for, I don't know, at least a month, two months. Um, and then all of a sudden, I, the voltage and the amperage started to spike up. Uh, now I've seen this before. It's because this large crystal that's on the bottom is essentially, I guess you could say shorting out. Not completely, obviously there's enough resistance there that it's not completely shorting out, but uh, it's shorting out amongst the sediment that's along the bottom. You can see all that down there. Uh, so the electricity is traveling through the stuff at the bottom and then into the anode, uh, or from the anode through the stuff at the bottom to the cathode. And it's not growing the rest of the crystals. It's just kind of growing it down in here, which is a big issue. Now, depending on your tank, depending on how you're growing it, uh, if there is at least like that much space between your anode and the cathode at the bottom of the tank, it's probably not gonna be an issue, at least not for a while. But I'm going to go ahead and remove these crystals and then I'm going to empty this out, filter it, and then let it recrystallize uh, so I can purify it and use it once more. Uh, I need this crystallizing dish for another video and another element that I'm going to be crystallizing out for you guys. Um, but I figured you wanted to see the new batch of copper crystals. So we're going to take these out and see how they look. Uh, first, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the anode and wash it into the solution. Got a, a pretty uh, crystal structure once that surface is removed. These are the crystals that form after being poured once it's molten and it slowly cools down. That's how those grow. And the bigger the crystal, the slower it cooled. Now this part always makes me nervous because oftentimes they're really brittle and often break off and fall into the bottom of the solution. I'm gonna to try to avoid that. Okay, so I've hung the crystals up here. In fact, we could turn that off. Okay, so I'm gonna spray this very liberally. Um, in fact, I'm gonna spray this all over and let it sit for several minutes, spray it again, let it sit, and then spray it again. We wanna make sure to get all of that copper sulfate off. If you don't, I find, if you don't take this extra step, uh, the crystals will darken much, much faster. Um, kind of like these crystals here at the top, or these right here in the back. You see how they're much darker than the ones up front? Uh, the rest of the crystals will eventually turn that way. I mean, copper oxidizes in oxygen. That's simply the way it is. Um, but uh, if you want to prolong that, you want to clean it completely. Now you could put a coating on this, you know, some sort of spray clear coat, and that would probably keep the color. Um, however, I sell these as pure elemental copper, and it wouldn't be pure elemental copper if it had some sort of coating on it. Uh, the people I sell this to usually use them in uh, chemical reactions and whatnot, and they have to rely on the fact that it's pure.
Okay, so I'm gonna let this drip. Like I said, I'm gonna spray it again, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pick the camera back up once I'm ready to pull the crystals off. Okay, so I have these rinsed off and for the most part dry. Now it's time to pull them off. This is usually the easiest part. The only thing you wanna watch out for is that you don't break them in the middle if you can help it. You wanna break them towards the base. And I'll start with the, the biggest one here. There's not really any good tips I can give for this part. Um, you can see how that one, the wire is right about here. And it broke right here. Um, I'm gonna pull as much of these crystals off, even if they're tiny like this. I'm gonna pull as many of them off as I can on this, this go around. Um, because like I said, I'm gonna be using this crystallizing dish for something else. You see, some of them just crumble on you. Oh, that one's gonna fall apart anyway. Well, yeah. a shame. Now all of these really small ones are the ones that crumble. I usually melt down into a brick and you just keep that as a pure ingot of copper. These big ones though I like to keep as crystals. I mean sure you can melt these big ones down that's um, that's not a problem at all they'll melt down just the same but I think they're much more beautiful this way. My computer would start making noise. I don't know how many how many more good ones I'm gonna get off this one. Since I don't plan on reusing this uh, anode, I might as well stretch it out, make it easier. Or this cathode, I mean.
Okay. Yeah, I think that's about all I'm going to get. Um, now, once you get down to this point, you'll find that you can oftentimes bend and break these crystals off the wire. Uh, this is how I get enough to melt down in a crucible. Now you see how these crystals are starting to come away here? Focus. <laughs> As AVE would say, focus you fuck. There we go. Works. <laughs> but as you bend the copper wire underneath, you can break away all of the purified copper that you were growing, like this. Now, you're not going to be able to save these parts, but this is pure copper uh, that you can melt down and use for whatever. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and get this all stripped off, and I will pick the camera back up and show you how much I ended up with. So here is the crystals uh, that I got all together out of this ingot thus far. Um, these crystals that are here at the top, from here on up, you see how they're slightly darker than the ones below. I had, these are from the first video, the first batch of crystals that I pulled. Um, the I left them out in the air, and so I didn't seal them up like in a box or, or anything like that on a jar. And that's what happens when you just leave them out in the air. Um, these smaller ones seem to oxidize a bit faster than the larger ones. And you see down here, these are the freshly grown ones. Now, this is all the stuff that I peeled off of the cathode, and this is what's left. As you can see, I got most of the copper that we put it off. In fact, all of it. Uh, just goes to show that you can get all of the copper that you grow this way recovered. And I've still got quite a bit of the anode left. Well, I wouldn't say, well, enough to probably do one more batch here. Just throw it into another crucible and melt it in with, uh, not this, but just some other scrap uh, copper, uh, like lead, or uh, pipe and wire and stuff like that. Uh, and then make a full ingot and grow more later on down the line. This stuff I will go ahead and throw in a crucible on its own. I've got a whole jar of uh, pure copper clippings like this. Um, and so I'll just fill up a crucible with that and p pour a couple pure ingots instead of just the scrap ingots. Um, but like I said, I'm going to go ahead and filter this. If you have not seen how I take care of this solution, I will put a link in the description. It shows you how I purify it and filter it and then recover metals from what fell to the bottom.